Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Aurelio Muttoni, I'm professor at the Swiss uh, Institute of Technology in uh, Lausanne. And I will chair uh, this session, uh, 1B, together uh, with uh, one representative of the, of the uh, French group of um, FIB and one uh, representative of the um, young member group of FIB. I'm very happy to have uh, two chair, two co-chairs to this, to this, uh, to this session. I, and perhaps I, I ask uh, Francois and Marta to introduce yourself, please. Okay, so my name is uh, Francois Toulmonde. I'm the deputy head of the materials and structures department at uh, uh, Gustave Eiffel uh, University. So the uh, university who co-hosts uh, this uh, uh, FIB PhD symposium. Uh, well, I'm involved in uh, uh, concrete uh, science, especially for uh, interested in uh, uh, innovative fiber reinforced and uh, high performance, ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete, and also uh, durability and uh, expansion reactions of uh, concrete. And it's my pleasure to, to co-chair this uh, session. Okay, thank you, Francois and Marta. Uh, hello, um, I'm Marta Del Zotto, uh, postdoc at University of Naples, Federico II in Italy, uh, mainly working on uh, structural assessment and uh, design of retrofit solution with composite materials. And I'm also a member of the FIB Young Members Group, international and at national level in Italy. And I'm honored to be here today. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Francois and Marta. I think we can, we can start with the presentations. The first, uh, the first um, will be uh, Sara Khalil Ibrahim. Um, she is from the Shejetni. Eastern University in Hungary. I'm sorry for, for the wrong pronunciation of your university. Perhaps you can repeat it uh, be much better than, than me. And uh, you, the title of your presentation, you, will, you can see it in exactly on this, on this first slide. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sarah Khalil Ibrahim. Uh, I am a PhD student at my first year in Sisnish Tivan University in Hungary. Um, the first outlines that I'm going to talk about today uh, is a brief introduction for uh, nanoprismatic beams and CFRB strengthening, then uh, our research objectives uh, to show also beam details, materials properties, and to explain the experimental and numerical programs, and then discuss the results that we have, and of course, uh, finally, the conclusions. Uh, the first question that we have in here, and we have to explain and answer, what are nonprismatic beams? Beams are those uh, structural elements that connect columns and transfer loads from slabs into columns. And we know that normal beams have uh, usually a constant depth. However, nonprismatic beams uh, are those beams that, uh, ha uh, that uh, can be divided into three sections. Uh, the mid-span section that you can uh, see in here have a constant depth, while uh, the right and the left sections that you can see uh, have a variable depth. Having a variable depth uh, causing and generating uh, an uh, angle called alpha. Uh, simply supported and continuous uh, bridges and framed buildings are considered um, general application for the prismatic beams. Uh, the Nanoprismatic beams uh, have advantages in using. Uh, first advantage that we have is um, using a small depth can um, make the building in light weight. That uh, we have a small depth, so uh, the amount of concrete will be less. So the uh, amount of weight of the total building will be less. Also using a beam with a small depth can make it easier to uh, place the facilities like air conditioning and uh, piping. Also using this kind of nanoprismatic reinforced concrete beams make it more efficient to use concrete and steel. The second question that we have in here is what is CFRB strengthening? CFRB strengthening our carbon fiber reinforced polymers considered a great method of strengthening these days. Uh, where 
it's characterized by its uh, um, easy installation, low cost in comparison with other methods of strengthening, uh, and has less losses. Also, it has uh, a high strength to weight ratio. The CFRB strips having a higher, st uh, higher strength in the direction of the fibers. Also, um, Research and researchers have been agreed that using strips in new shape, like you see in here, will make the strengthening more efficient, uh, where the uh, strips will envelop and confine the beam section. Also, it will increase the, bond, the, uh, the bonding area, so uh, this is an important point in strengthening. Moreover, using these strips inclined by 45 degrees, as you can see in here, will make it uh, perpendicular to the crack path, which is 45 degrees also. And this will prevent the propagation of the crack uh, to reach the surface of the beam and will uh, consider more efficient, of course. So this information that we have will make us in front of two uh, major objectives. First of all, calibrating a numerical model according to the experimental da data that we have in our labs. The second uh, of all, uh, carrying out a series of uh, numerical simulation with different hand angle values and CFRB strips number and study these variables uh, and study their effect on the shear behavior. This slide shows uh, the beams details that we have uh, in here and uh, first figure uh, that's shown in here shows the beams geometry where we can see that the depth at the support is constant and it's about 250 millimeter while this depth is varying as you can see uh, generating uh, alpha angle. This angle in our research has been considered in three values 9 degree, 11.7 degree and 6.18 degree. Having variable alpha will, of course, lead into a different depth at the mid span. Also, the second part of the presentation of this slide shows the reinforcement details of the beam that we used. And it's worth mentioning that uh, we designed the beam to, uh, to have a shear failure, as it's our case of study. This slide shows uh, two other cases of our beams that we have when uh, alpha angle is 9 degree. Uh, the first one shows uh, two CFRB strips, and the second one shows uh, three CFRB strips. We can notice that the width of the strips used is 50 millimeter, and it's inclined by 45 degree. So this will act perpendicularly on the crack that's going to be from support to the uh, mid uh, to the uh, point loading that we have in here. And in our research, we use, of course, uh, three major uh, materials, steel, CFRP, and concrete. And to use these materials, we, uh, you, uh, we needed to know their properties. The properties shown in front of you in this table uh, have been gained by experimental tests. And I wanted to mention also that these properties are used in both experimental and numerical parts. As for any research, we needed experimental results. And uh, I wanted to mention that the experimental program in this research uh, is done by uh, University of Technology Laboratories uh, in Iraq. And these two figures in front of you shows two uh, cases when we have two CFRP and three CFRP, where the beams are in its initial loading uh, case. After finishing with the experimental part, now we are going to talk about uh, the numerical part, which is the finite element modeling. And uh, I wanted to mention also that this part was done by using uh, Abaco software. And the first figure in here shows the meshing of the beam. Uh, it's worth mentioning that the meshing of the beam was considered by using C3D8 element for representing concrete, B31 uh, element for representing steel, and S4 element for representing CFRP. The total number of elements for each beam is uh, approximately 9,500 elements for each beam. Uh, to study uh, the numerical part more in Abacos, we needed uh, a model. And the model that we chose was the concrete damage plasticity model. This uh, model uh, concentrates on the compressive and tension behavior of concrete and the damage happening in each part. Um, this model also assumes that uh, the failure in concrete is happening either by uh, compression uh, crushing or uh, tension uh, cracking. 
So the first one, shock equation shown in here, uh, represent the relationship between normal stresses and effective stresses, where you can see that the effective stresses is divided into tension and compression parts. The effective stresses are the undamaged stresses in the concrete. The second part of equation that we have here are the equation showing the relationship between uh, normal stresses and modulus of elasticity and strain, which is damaged. And the value in here, one minus D, is the value represents how much the damage of concrete that we have. And we can see it have compression equations and tension equations. The third part of equation that we have in here is uh, uh, the relationship between uh, com um, effective stre stresses and normal stresses, and by its way uh, with the modulus of elasticity and strain. All these equations shown in here are derived from the figure that you can see at the end of the slide, where this first figure shows the uh, compressive uh, behavior of concrete, and the second figure shows the tension behavior of concrete. After applying the um, experimental and the numerical uh, parts, we gained some results. And to understand res these results more and more, we needed to make uh, some comparisons. The first comparison that we have uh, in here is between uh, numerical and experimental work when we have alpha equal 90 degree and no CFRP strips. As you can see, the curve that we have are matching with either, which each other nicely. The second comparison that we have in here between numerical and experimental work also when alpha equal nine also, but two CFRB strips are used. And we can notice that the behavior of the two curves are similar to each other. The third uh, comparison that we have in here is between numerical and experimental work uh, for the same alpha angle, but of the existence of the three CFRP strips. And we can notice that the curves are matching each other almost. Now we wanted to concentrate on um, the numerical results and the comparison that we have in here when alpha equal nine degree with the three different cases. First of uh, it uh, with no CFRP strips, second is with two CFRP strips and third is with the three CFRP strips. And we can notice that using three CFRB strips gave the maximum loading. However, to compare uh, at the same load, using CFRB strips increased the load but decreased the deflection values. And if I want to explain this, it's because using CFRB confine and restrict the shear area. So it prevents the crackers from uh, being uh, more wider, being uh, propagated. That means the shear resistance in that uh, uh, place will be more and uh, this will increase the loading value. However, using CFRP uh, will confine that area and prevent uh, the cracks to be wider. That means the deflection value will be less. And uh, most researchers have agreed that using CFRP uh, is uh, trying to make the failure more brittle and uh, more sudden. The last comparison that I have in here is with no CFRB strips and it's numerically uh, compared between three uh, alpha values. Uh, and we can see that uh, that, uh, we can see that uh, as we are using a minimum alpha value, uh, the load increase. However, comparing in values at the same load uh, using a min, uh, minimum alpha value, as you can see here, uh, give, uh, increase the load. Uh, however, it decreased deflection values. And if I want to explain this, uh, I will depend on the shear uh, resistance of the beam, where we know that the shear resistance of the beam depends uh, majorly on the amount of concrete that we have in the beam. Using a bigger alpha value will uh, uh, minimize the depth and after that we can see that the amount of concrete will be less. So the concrete that uh, should be resist the shear has been disappeared or, make, or made uh, more or less. This means that we will have less load values. However, increasing alpha value will give a smaller depth, so smaller cross-sectional area. And we know that the deflection equation in beams depends uh, inversely on the uh, cross-sectional area. That means more deflection values. 
uh, this slide shows the uh, stresses distribution in the models that we have for the uh, same alpha angle, which is nine. The first one is with no uh, CFRB strips. The second one is with two CFRB strips. And the third one is with the three uh, CFRB strips. And if we want to uh, compare uh, the behavior of the stresses when we have CFRP strips, we can see that uh, using CFRP uh, have made the stresses in shear area less. And uh, the stresses in the flexure area or in the midspan of uh, the beam are more intense and more distributed. And it uh, looks like uh, if the uh, CFRP strips, stresses uh, need, uh, try to shift the stresses from the shear area into flexure area, that it's to prevent the stresses to um, propagate in the shear area. So after uh, doing all the experimental numerical work and comparing the results, we uh, came into uh, three basic conclusions. The first conclusion that we have is increasing alpha angle value decreases the ultimate strength value. However, as we've seen, increasing this alpha angle value will make uh, the beam behave more elasticity way. Uh, the second conclusion, uh, conclusion that we have in here is by comparing between a numerical and experimental result, it's noted that the existence of CFRP strips causes an increment in the ultimate load of beams, where it acts like extra support for the shear resistance of the beam. However, using these um, uh, strengthening method uh, make the uh, failure more brittle and more sudden. The third conclusion that we came into is uh, using CFRP strips, let the cracking in the mid span of the beam increase in number in intensity. Consider a sign that the most of stresses are transferred and shifted from shear area into the mid span of the beam. And uh, this means that the CFRB strips are working in strengthening. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm coming to listen to any question that you have. Okay, th thank you very much for the, for the uh, presentation. Um, before we uh, start, um, uh, with the questions, I will just, I would like to, to, to say to the audience that you have the possibility to ask questions and we, all, we, are, we are very happy if, if you ask questions. There are several possi possibilities. You can write questions on the chat uh, that the, the, or the ask questions in the, in, in the application that you have in, um, in, in Zoom or if you want, you can also intervene um, uh, directly. There is already, there are two, already two questions. The first one is by, by um, uh, there is a question. Thank you for your presentation. I would like to know how was simul simulated numerically the bond between the CFRP and concrete. Is the numerical model ca capable of considering the, bo the, the bonding mechanism? Greetings, greetings from Brazil. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, maybe uh, would be the more challenging thing in uh, working uh, with abacus with two different materials and to consider the bonding because we know, you know, we try to make it more and more real. CFRP uh, strips are used uh, using a glue in, in reality uh, to uh, make the contact with concrete. However, in uh, uh, abacus, you have uh, a lot of uh, possibilities and we considered uh, some of the con uh, contact uh, and uh, the contact was hard to hard and uh, there's a lot of variables and uh, um, uh, like a friction factor and these things were considered to the abacus so we can have somehow uh, so uh, close to the real work that we have. Of course uh, um, a number of simulation were done with this so we can know uh, the best uh, way of doing this. Uh, we considered uh, having a glue and uh, put it the glue materials and then we considered have only contacts uh, like tie contact and other type of contacts and uh, till we had these results that was, which were uh, really uh, close to the reality that we have. Okay, thank you. Then there is another very important question by Francois Toulmond. 
um, I was surprised that your boundary conditions are simply support. Uh, also, I think in the real structures, such haunted beams are clamped at the end. And I think this is very important because I think that these uh, beams uh, with variable depth uh, have been very popular in the past, at least in Europe, uh, until the, let's say, until the 50s. And uh, this was typically used for continuous beams um, in order to increase the depth over the supports, but also to allow to the uh, inclined compression zone to carry a significant part of the, of the, of the shear force. Um, in your case, I was also very surprised that you have investigated simply supported beams and it, in this case, not only you don't have this effect, but the, uh, the vertical component of the force in the reinforcement is even detrimental for carrying shear. So do you have a, can you please explain why, why you have chosen this, uh, this case to, to investigate? Uh, first of all, uh, when we made this uh, beam, uh, we had a little bit problem with designing. As you know, codes uh, are not supportive to such kind of beams. Uh, not all of the codes, of course. So uh, as we are constricting on shear, uh, we wanted to constrict more and more on the pure shear area. Uh, having simply supported beam and uh, two point loads made the, the non-prismatic part of the beam, having a pure shear area. We didn't want to mix with other uh, moment and the flexure um, um, uh, like stresses that we have. Uh, simply supported is uh, considering a simple way of uh, studying the behavior of this beam. I know that uh, these beams were uh, mainly has uh, designed uh, to uh, resist another uh, types of loading that we have even for uh, earthquakes especially because the uh, internal or the axial forces that uh, come into beam will make it act uh, very different than the normal beam and uh, that's why it's used in a uh, lot of uh, bridges and uh, it's considered uh, very important very uh, a nice solution for earthquakes and for uh, dynamic loads. However, we want to study a simple way of the beam, a simpler way of the beam. And on our uh, next and the future uh, uh, like plans, uh, we are intended to uh, have dynamic loads and to change the, uh, the, supporting, uh, the supporting type. Yes, um, if, um, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that they can agree. Um, um, Let's admit, admit that, you, that it's easier to test simply supported beams, but you are investigating, investigating a topic which is not very uh, typical for practice. And uh, perhaps something which is interesting for you, uh, this topic has been investigated uh, more than 100 years ago, because at that time, these kind of beams were, have been very, very popular. And for instance, for instance, there are tests done in Germany about 100 year, years ago, which are very well described in the, in the book by Emil Mörsch and to investigate the, uh, the effect of variable depth in continuous beams, they just investigated simply supported beams, but they, they turned them uh, upside down. And then if you put just a, a, a force in the middle of the beam, of the simply supported beam with this kind of, 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 of beam, then you can very easily investigate this, this situation. I will just sketch it. I will try to sketch. It was just tested. Oh, my sketch is very bad. I'm sorry for that. But it was just tested in this, in this manner here. And it's very easy to, to, to do such a test. And then it's exactly what happens in, in, in practice. Uh, yes, but you see in this case, uh, the bending moment diagram and the shear diagram will mix with each other. And I want to study uh, the shear uh, strengthening in here with CFRB. So I needed yes. the shear crack uh, would be a sh pure shear crack that I can say that I strengthened in shear with the... Uh, the strengthening CFRB. in shear would be, the, would be in this manner. Um, uh, uh, um. And in fact, it reproduces quite nicely what happens in, 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 in practice. So by, I think I, we need to switch to other questions because there are other ones. Any particular reason for not showing the 
post-peak response of both numerical and experimentally? Uh, there is no specific reason for doing this. Uh, uh, we are uh, showing the behavior of the failure of the beam like this, and uh, uh, you can notice that the beam has uh, reached the ultimate load uh, and uh, started to fail. This is what we are considered in here uh, uh, by uh, experimental results that we have and uh, by the numerical uh, method that we worked on. Yes. And I wanted just to, to ask something related to the title that you uh, of your presentation. You talk about um, about numerical plastic analysis and and why 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 do we have plastic analysis in in the title of your of your of your paper and then of your presentation? Because it seems that the behavior is quite brittle. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's right. Is there a reason? Uh, the reason for uh, having a plastic, you mean? Yeah. Uh, because uh, this is what we are uh, concentrating on the behavior of the beam. And uh, as I saw, uh, I show you, uh, we used uh, the concrete damaged plasticity model. Uh, okay. That, uh, that, was, uh, that we are concentrating on the plastic part of all the uh, models that we have in here. Okay, I understand. Thank you. And then there is another question by Francois Toulmont. Uh, in, in your model, can you predict the post-peak phase and quality uh, and qualify the utility? This would be useful when using such hunched beams in seismic new buildings or strengthening situations. Uh, of course, I am still my first year of PhD and I have a lot of plans and uh, consideration for the three uh, other years that I'm going to study. And uh, of course, I'm going to consider uh, a lot of these uh, variables and a lot of properties that uh, I couldn't have time to finish in here. So of course, yes, uh, in the, my first plans there will be. Yes. Thank you. Then uh, there was a question by Andy Setiavan, but I don't see... Ah, yes, uh, uh, I'm seeing. I'm seeing it. Uh, thank you, Khaled, for the interesting presentation. Could you describe the difference in terms of failure mode and, and shear crack inclination for beams with different alpha values? Uh, well, as uh, I said, uh, if you are talking about the shape of the crack, the crack will keep uh, uh, linking the support that we have with the uh, point of loading that we have also, that you can see, like for example, uh, the, uh, the uh, crack will keep uh, linking this part together. So uh, changing the alpha value will affect on the shear resistance on the ultimate load that I have, but the crack will keep uh, as it uh, behaves in shear way to link between support that I have and uh, the point load uh, that I have in here. So it will keep uh, by inclination with 45 degree. Okay, thank you. I think that we have to stop here. It's already 2.30. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and thank you very much for the, for, uh, to the audience for the very interesting uh, questions. So thank you very much, uh, Sarah. I think we need to go to the next presentation. Thank you again. Thanks. And congratulations.